This is a video showing how to use the AR Drone demo app on Android. It's being demonstrated on a Galaxy S running Gingerbread and the video will take you through the initial connection to the drone, doing default settings, uh, setting up profiles and profile management, flying the drone, doing video recording and just generally using the app. I'll now show you how to connect to the drone Wi-Fi. So if we go into the Wi-Fi settings on the Android, click wireless network, Wi-Fi settings, then you can see I'm connected to an existing network and I'll select the drone. And it's always going to be called AR Drone something. And then it's connected to the drone. If you're not connected to the drone, the app won't work. So you have to connect to the drone. This is with 1.7.4 frame firmware on the drone which allows you direct connections without modifying your Android device. I'm now connected to the drone, it's showing you the video and using the default settings. Now you can see that the drone is currently running 1.74 on the actual SD card route. There's an update file which is running 1.5.1. You can also download from Parrot or update the drone from this menu. Uh, and I'll take you through the other settings. I'll now switch to button press mode because that's just the way I like using control for the cyclic. Larger on screen, that's personal preference, it's just easier to use with a bigger on screen joystick. And then you can see the other settings as I'm scrolling through. Generally, just using the defaults. If Because I'm using 1.7.4 or 1.6.6, I'm using P264 codec. I like audio feedback. I also like text-to-speech. You have to have text-to-speech installed on your Android device, obviously. Um, show the altitude. Show the switch profile button, which we'll be using to switch between the profiles quickly. And I like multiple video recordings so that they don't get overwritten and it just gets a timestamp on the video recording. It always restarts the demo app after you quit exit on the, if you've done a settings change. And there you see connected to the drone, showing the battery and video status. Now we're going to manage profiles. We'll create a new profiles. I'll just call this one indoor. Click OK. Click another new profile. Call this one outdoor. Surprisingly enough, you'll be able to work out what I'm going to use these two profiles for. And just click cancel to get rid of the dialog. Right. Back into the menu settings. So change settings this time rather than default. You can see it's telling you which profile you're editing. Um, for the indoor settings, it should have pulled in the default settings that I'd already configured, so there shouldn't really be anything I need to change on this just scrolling through to show that it's used the default settings that I've already selected including text-to-speech and the altitude right now I'll switch into the other profile the outdoor profile select outdoor on this menu and I'll go back into the menu and change the settings for this profile you can see it's saying outdoor profile. Now for the outdoor profile you want to be a bit more aggressive and you want to also configure some outdoor settings on control. So I won't limit out maximum altitude, outdoor hull, outdoor mode. Then we'll scroll down and then tilt angle. That means basically you can tilt the drone, you get faster in motion. And you don't want that inside but you do want that outside, especially if it's windy. And also I'll show the Wi-Fi signal strength because you might get your drone flying away otherwise. In theory it's meant to land, but in practice, doubtful. Okay, so we've configured an indoor and outdoor profile now. You can see it's running the outdoor profile at the moment because it's showing the Wi-Fi settings. I'll switch back to the indoor profile and you see the Wi-Fi settings go gone away, so that has actually switched. There's also a quite fast switch menu button which is top left which looks like two overlaid windows and that's what I'm pressing now to switch between the profiles. 
and it's back to the indoor profile again. Alright, I'll now create another profile called Dual Stick because basically I just wanted to show you that you can also use, if you don't like tilt controls or using the built in inertial control of your phone, then you also want to use, you can use the on screen joysticks. So for this one, just Dual Stick. So it will have uh, two joysticks on screen. I'll switch to Dual Stick. and I'll actually configure the cyclic control to be rather than button press I'll have on-screen cyclic and this will be shown where the button was on the left you can swap them round if you want to use them the other way round normally it's height and yaw on the right and cyclic on the left just showing all the settings have come taken through for the dual stick settings and there you see the two two on screen joysticks now. Cyclic on the left, your and height on the right. And you can see you can just move the controls independently of each other all together. And they obviously don't interact, so you can just control the thing through without you tilting your device. It tilts disabled when you're in this mode. Recording video at and now I'm starting recording second. a video so you can I can play back the recording of the video that I'm recording and it's taking off pressing the you see the takeoff button switch to landing mode and switch to the indoor profile so you're on the using the fast active. button on screen to switch between Tilt it control disabled. and you can just get some prompts as I'm switching around and you can see it rotating Indoor profile dynamically switching. Tilt control active. Now Tilt control a bit more disabled. Control when you're in the outdoor mode. And on dual stick. You can see you can control the cyclic and your and cyclic again. Landing. And I'll just land. Stopped recording. And the video recording stopping. And I'll show you what's now been recorded on the video. Well, actually, I'll also show you some other things on the... It's always on the root of your SD card. You can see the video at the top. And the other settings on my files. You can see it's time and date stamped. And there's another one I'd recorded earlier. And then also an update file. That's the update file that you get from the firmware update. So you can copy it in manually to the root of your SD card. But I'll just load in the video now, and there you can see the video file. That's what was recorded from the flying on the drone. So you can show how great you are at flying, or in my case, how many times I crash. Yeah, it's a bit. It's only recorded at 320 by 240, so it's a bit scaled up on, as I see on I'm playing back. landing. There you go, that's the video recorded from the drone. I'll now go back into the app and show you a few more settings. There we are back in. And we've got the battery status which means you've got nav data indoor and we've also got some other controls on screen which show you to know you just next to the recording video it's the switching the camera on the drone so I'm switching through the cameras that's both cameras active Flying. or you can so you've got the down vertical camera it and oh dear I've just crashed <laughs> but you see then you get the emergency landing and flashing on the screen and the, the emergency button switch to reset you can actually take off if you want to or just press the emergency button to reset it back to normal state and then you can see just switching through the cameras with the camera switch button between the profile and the video record button and I think that's more or less it so happy flying be careful with your drones <laughs>